I looked him up on the internet and that says many strange things, acronyms that I've never heard of. Who's our acronym expert? Ollie, was it? No. Something. Yeah, right. Uh, what does R-I-C-F-A-I mean? I'm sure I don't know and, uh, until I looked up. But we are introducing, I'm introducing today a young man from our antipodes who came out to this country as a backpacker in 1968. And he got caught up with a young lady called Margaret Young. And he eventually in, whether he had to marry or not, I don't know. <laughs> but he got married in 69, has four children. To, uh, well, sorry, I missed Margaret Young. Margaret Young is from Echuca in Victoria. And they have four children and four grandchildren. Now he, I first met him, his foreign tongue had been mellowed a bit, it isn't as bad as it, is, as it was then, but we were, we got together on the, uh, on the, uh, in the university council room when I was director of an organisation called SAPMIA, which the doctors may know, but the, the acronym doesn't really matter. Uh, and I, I met this young man and I thought, well, like me, I'd come from New Guinea in 1974 and knew nobody, and, but I, I was a member of Rotary and continued in my association with Rotary and, and I thought that young boat, Frank, it might be worth it, uh, talking to him about Rotary. So we talked about Rotary, and uh, in due course, Frank became a, a member of Rotary in 83, and his CV, which he didn't know existed, he, he like a stupid like I did also, got onto LinkedIn. Who's in LinkedIn? That's what I mean, yeah. You, if you get into LinkedIn, and I find out all everything about him, and he didn't know this until I told him, and now he will look. He's, he's chairman of ICFAI since 04, his company director of Unity Housing since 08. He's a company director of Cyberlinks International since 02, and a company director of Education Services International since 98. He's, uh, and I'm sure there's a lot more if I've had the time to uh, get into this and get the full overview. I'm sure there's a lot more there, Frank, that uh, uh, I haven't got. But even so, uh, Frank was with Rotary for three years, then he got overburdened with the problems of his work and lunchtime meetings and all the rest and left. But he came back to Rotary in 05 and uh, is a Paul Harris fellow. He has contributed and does continue to co contribute in the community, particularly in Unity Housing and other organisations. Um, uh, Rotary have made an excellent choice of this young man that, uh, who's some 20 years younger than I am, or 21 maybe, but uh, he's here today and I give you Frank. Rotarians and friends, I'm glad that Roy doesn't dig too deep. He only gets the superficial stuff. Thank you for that introduction, Roy. I'm uh, flattered. Uh, I joined Rotary in 1983 when Roy was my sponsor and Jeff Tight inducted me. And both are still here, and that's fantastic. 
As Roy said, our business and professional lives sometimes uh, squeeze out everything else. And so, for, after three years, I uh, had to withdraw from Rotary. Because in those days, attendance requirements were strictly policed. Thank goodness we have other ways of uh, engaging with members and friends. When I came back to Australia in 2005, I met up with uh, uh, my dear friend uh, Clive Amore, who's passed away now. Clive remembered me from earlier days, and uh, of course Clive was one of those great party hosts you would meet at his home. And Clive encouraged me to come back, and I was delighted to do so. And Ollie Clark inducted me. So... <laughs> you may well have, Ollie. And I'm sure Clive is looking after us all from where he is at the moment. But that's how I got involved in this club, and came to enjoy it, enjoy the friendship that it provides, enjoy the passion for service, that is delivered. And I think that's the basis of our club. We are a club of friends, and that friendship sustains our passion for service. And sometimes we get so absorbed in raising money, in good causes, we, are, we overlook this. But I want us to remember that. Today, I just want to touch on two or three things. Yesterday I, morning, because I was at lunch yesterday, I typed up some things that I would probably want to start say. It came to six or seven pages. <laughs> so this morning I picked out one or two topics that I would like to talk about. We're a bit like the, the story of the Bishop of Exeter. In 1900, the Bishop of Exeter always went to his confirmations by train. Always. There were no cars around. And one day, the ticket inspector came off the train, came up to his lordship, and his lordship couldn't find the ticket. So the inspector says, don't worry, my lordship, I know who you are. And in consternation, the bishop said, but I need the ticket because I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> and in a way, we're a bit like that. We know who we are, we know what our mission is, we know what our values are, but we're not quite sure where we're going in the next few years and in the future. And so I think one of the things that we need to do is to begin to concentrate on strategy. Develop a plan, I would suggest a three-year plan, that's based on immediate past present presidents who have known where we've just come from, the current president who hopefully knows where we're at, and the president-elect and president-nominee who are part of the future. So a three-year plan fits very nicely into that sequence. And already I notice the Community Service Committee is thinking along these lines because they're allocating resources at the club and they're not quite sure whether it's in the general direction that the club wants to invest. Now I have to acknowledge Brian Harris and Chris Mitchamore here because we have started to actually develop a strategic framework for allocating funds. And questions have been asked in the board about what is appropriate. But I think over the next year we should try and get in place a strategic plan. These are boring administrative things, but they need to be done. So I'm going to ask the board on next Tuesday night to actually set up a little group to take that through during this next year. But as part of that, we need to build in what the RI president wants of us, what his vision for Rotary in the big world is. He has sent us notice that he wants us to engage Rotary and change lives. He, he talked to us last November, you may recall, he came here to Adelaide and he, we all were quite inspired by, by that talk. 
uh, and he's coming back to Australia in June to run the RI International Conference in Sydney. And more about that later. I think we need to develop partnerships. Partnerships with other organizations that have the same values, similar missions, whom we can work with and together optimize the resources that we can invest in our communities. In our communities both locally, nationally and internationally. If we remain a silo, we will deny ourselves the opportunity to do greater work. So partnerships will be a theme, and we already have some good partnerships. We work with Operation Flinders, and we, with them, generate funds that support both our organizations. We also work with uh, the Future Two Foundation from the Financial Planners, and it's interesting to note that last year we raised over 280,000, but half of that money was raised with partners. If we didn't have those partners, we would have only raised half that money and only have been able to uh, generate, uh, invest in service to half the extent. But most importantly, it's about engagement. We need to engage with our communities. We need to engage with the vulnerable people that we actually help. Because if we don't know what they need, we may not actually allocate the resources appropriately. So it's engagement with other partners, it's engagement with their clients, uh, and it's of course engagement with one another. That's how we, we develop our relationships, our friendships. We do things, we work together. And that is vitally important in this committee. But I always hear from members, I don't know what's going on in the club. Nobody tells me. I'm sure that's right, nobody does tell you. But we do have a website. We do have a bulletin each week which highlights uh, activities in the club. We even have a Facebook and YouTube presentations. So there's great opportunity to find out if you're motivated. But as part of the strategy this year, we have combined the director's role with the sergeant's role. Why would we do that? I would hope that the directors whom, whom you have elected will have a direct communication with you as to what's happening in their portfolios while still raising a few dollars for worthwhile activities through fine sessions. So that's the start of it. I've also identified that we don't connect well with the news, print, with radio, and with TV. And so I've asked, I've, I've brought all of the activities that relate to public relations and branding and communication under one portfolio and I've asked the president-elect, Peter Neal, to head that portfolio up. And through that, we have given it an organizational capacity to begin interacting with the press in its various guises. Communication is very important inside the club, so we're motivated to do things, but it's vitally important to let our communities know what we're doing. I think we have new generations who will relate to us through our website and through our, our Facebook. And in that context, we have had several new members of this club who only knew us through that medium and whom we then actually met, screened their values, and now have they become new members and vital members of the club. If we want to stay the same, we have to change. So I'm not asking everybody to get on Facebook, but it is one of the mediums through whom, through which we will actually contact new generations. There are lots of other things that will follow uh, if we can get these three things right. Strat strategy, partnership and engagement, and communication. You may, today you would have been given your new green book 
It's a directory of all our members. Uh, we have uh, expanded it a little bit. But in the center fold, there's an organization chart of our club. It's complex, but I think it sets it out quite nicely as to the responsibilities. I have to thank David Egan as Vice President for getting this book out on time, within budget, and after an enormous amount of effort to try and get it as up to date as possible. This couldn't have happened without the significant inputs of Jeff Wagner, whom I discover actually holds our database on his personal computer and had hoped not to do this anymore. But we encouraged him to do this one last hurrah. And Simon Drew and Adriano, uh, Sisterino, have agreed that we will have a living database that will automatically produce this from now on. So thank you, Simon, <laughs> and taking over this role. Where are you, Simon? <laughs> <laughs> Simon, of course. I don't remember doing that. Oh, well. <laughs> Simon, of course, is our sergeant major. Simon is training all the sergeants at the minute. <laughs> and in terms of communication, Simon is training us as a club how to use e-communications. Our website has all the information on it. It's just a matter of knowing how to access it. The board for the last two years has used the website as its means of communication, all policy documents, all policy papers for the board are placed there and the board conducts its meetings in that environment. This year, I would hope that all chairs of committees would understand how to use the website and communicate with their committees. It's important because we actually dismantle the organizational structure uh, of our office. So now we must replace that with e-commerce, as I call it. It's bigger than electronic communication. So we must all learn how to do it. Our young members coming in will have no difficulty. They won't know how to communicate otherwise. But we as a club need to get on board with e-communications. I think in concluding, I would just say we have some significant events coming forward this year. The first one will be the celebration of 90 years of Rotary in South Australia. This club was founded on the 24th of August, 1923. And we are planning a major lunch in the Higginbotham Room to acknowledge that. And we will invest in the future by establishing two PhD scholarships, one in youth homelessness and one in Alzheimer's. The Youth Homelessness Scholarship, we have been under Brian Harris and then Chris, we have been putting together for some years. Two years, Brian, probably. But we've got it delivered, funded, and a university that has expertise to supervise. We will do the same with Alzheimer's because it seems to be the biggest scourge appearing on the horizon for Australia. But we will celebrate. We will celebrate Rotary in South Australia, and we will celebrate this great club. We were number three in Australia. Melbourne, Sydney, Adelaide, and then Hobart. The other thing, I will, if we get these things right, I think membership will flow. We don't have to have everybody as a member of our club to actually engage with them. They can, enjoy, they can join us on projects, on teams that we do, Maybe they get to know us, they'll want to join us. So, if we begin to communicate more in the community, we may well find that we will have people who want to be part of us. Because young people have the same altruistic need to actually belong and to commute and contribute to the development of society. They may do it differently, but that need is still there. So I think communication is vital. 
We will also have this year another major international development under Rob Mottram, who's the event manager. We will host the International Fellowship of Golf in our club. 400 members, Rob? Well, hopefully, oh, it's not a <laughs> 400 paying people, shall we put it that way? Uh, so, we, will, as a club, will need to be on board to provide good Australian hospitality to these uh, these individuals and be ambassadors for South Australia. It's a major risk that's been managed for the club. And immediate past president Chris Mitchellmore, as a director, will monitor that activity and report to the board. I think I've said enough, uh, and I would just thank you for your forbearance, and to say again, I am honoured to have been elected as your president, and I ask for your support as we work together to achieve greatness in the future. <laughs> thank you for listening. Thank you, Frank. It's it, uh, been great to hear the program and we hope that this year things will uh, proceed in an orderly fashion. We won't have a, a night of the long knives like we had last Wednesday. <laughs> uh, I think uh, I have a duty to give, to give you one of these excellent <laughs> I, I, If you haven't got one, you've now got one. <laughs> In my long association with this club, uh, I've addressed it once before I was a member and twice since I've been a member, and I still haven't, I can't find the pen. <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much. second longest serving member of Rotary in our club, I would not like to see you denied your pain. <laughs> so I will present it back to you. The other notable event is that uh, at a, two weeks after the charter was received of this club, you know, on the 4th of February, um, 1924, two weeks after that, and one day I was born. So. <laughs>